The whole sect gathered at the Yanwai Battle Arena in the Zhualing sect to see the spar. The prospect of elder brother Zhuo Junji's upcoming fight sent ripples of excitement throughout the entire Zhualing sect. It became the talk of the town, igniting curiosity and speculation among the disciples. Everyone was eager to witness the showdown, ensuring that no one would miss out on the action. Zhuo Junji was accompanied by Zhong Ling, who was telling him to be careful of Qin Jun, maybe hiding some tricks. Don't worry, you do know I have never been defeated by an opponent of the same realm. Even this trash can't even touch me. Leave alone, cut me. Chang Qin Zhen went and told our boy not to get angry. And if Zhuo Junji pissed you off, you can kill him as compensation and spare our Shualing sect. The sect master saw Qin Jun had a void transformation realm powerhouse as his bodyguard. The forces behind him are powerful. This made him think if Chang Qian Qian seduces and marries him. Thinking of this, he wanted to tell Zhuo Junji to show Qin Jun mercy. Chang Qian Qian told Qin Jun to be careful, because if anything happens to him, Daji and Blackie will turn the whole sect and its surroundings into a wilderness. Show me your magic weapon, ordered Zhuo Junji. Qin Jun was thinking should do it. 360 Ooga Booga Booga! A trick shot him. Nah, that's not good. But since he insisted, I use it. American first breathing technique. Infinite Blicky. What kind of weapon is that? I have never seen it before. You have seen too little. Get it, because the weapon is little. No? Okay, let's begin. Zhuo Junji didn't waste time and rushed towards Qin Jun, trying to kill him. This man said they will just spar, and Vro is aiming for Qin Jun's neck. But he dodged quite fast. Are you afraid that you dare not attack me? Regarded Zhuo Junji. You want to die? said Qin Jun as he activated the Tiangang 36 transformation, the art of instant blooming. Blooming sakura petals began to fall from the sky. Zhuo Junji smiled, sensing that the petals had no lethality, and asked Qin Jun if he has the balls to fight him like a man. Qin Jun smiled, remarking that the art of instant blooming, when the petals fall on an opponent, it devours their vitality, primordial spirit, and soul essence, and the withered petals fall with vitality, increasing Qin Jun's life expectancy. Bro is the feds in the cultivation world. Due to his low cultivation using supernatural powers, such as Tiangang 36 transformation, consumes a lot of his spiritual power. Due to that, he pulls out his trusty old friend and aims it at Zhuo Junji, telling him, don't be tense, it shoots kisses and doesn't. Zhuoling sect master notices something is wrong with the petals and warns Zhuo Junji about them. It was too late for Zhuo Junji when he realized that his primordial spirit and soul essence have decreased greatly with a permanent effect and asked Qin Jun what's going on. Qin Jun wasn't paying attention and was thinking, let me try shooting without my aim bot on. Yes, that's nice. People first aim and... Zhuo Junji jumped away, seeing the destructive power of Qin Jun's weapon, and told him, Is this the weapon you told me that gives kisses without any pain? Damn, this fucker can really run. He's like a roach, close to death, yet so alive. The onlookers began to say Qin Jun had deceived Zhuo Junji and got an advantage using cunning means. Qin Jun turned, telling the crowd, if I won't announce my technique nor tell you what they do. Bastard. That weapon won't let me get close. If I do, it's over for him, thought Zhuo Junji, dodging Qin Jun's spiritual bullets. He began to approach Qin Jun at a quick pace, ready to kill. Our protagonist was like, No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. No. screamed Zhuo Junji, pressing down on the wound to stop the bleeding. Uh, you lose, Muvinje said. Chin Jun. It's Junji, you imbecile, and that thing doesn't release kisses. The system congratulated him for defeating the Suling sect genius. He hopped down from the battle arena, making the sect master of Shualing sect terrified of how cunning Qin Jun was. Is there anything else? If not, I will be on my way. Chin Jun, Daji, and Blackie 
began to head out when Chang Qian Qian followed him. One of the elders tried to stop Qin Jun's gang, but was stopped by the sect master, telling him not to do that if he doesn't want to die, telling him due to Jun Ji's arrogance feeling undefeated among the same realm made him arrogant. Chang Hao, who had orchestrated and made his senior brother Zhuo Junji fight Qin Jun, was shocked to see Zhuo Junji defeated in a terrible state, starting to think what cultivation is Qin Jun. Chang Chenzhen tried to seduce and maintain good relations with him, asking him what was that ability he used and what does it do. Qin Jun just told her he won't tell her his ability or what they do, telling her to go back to the capital. Chang Chenzhen, blushing, asked if he will come back to see him. No way. Everyone in this sect sees me as an enemy, replied Qin Jun. Chang Qian Qian leaned closer, asking if she can come to see him. Qin Jun pushed her away, telling her lest you get hunted again. Chang Qian Qian insisted on seeing him. Qin Jun coldly told her not to, and she is leaving him, and she doesn't need to see her off. Qin Jun, don't forget to miss me, Sister Daji. Don't let Qin Jun take advantage of you said Chang Qian Qian as she waved goodbye to them. Don't worry, my lord doesn't have the ability, replied Daji. Oh, that one there was a violation. Personally, I wouldn't have it. Several days later. Qin Jun was now practicing how to use the Tiangong 36 transformation to fly. And oh boy, does bro look magnificent until the author had to nerf his plot armor because bro was too broken causing him to fall down from the sky. The nerfs be hitting Qin Jun while he rubs the pain off. Daji tells him that his cultivation base is too low to continue, in which Qin has been rushing to get back to his home, the Qin Yue Kingdom. Young master, people are fighting ahead, said Blackie. Oh, someone has the balls to cause trouble near the kingdom's capital, said Qin Jun ominously. Approaching the place the battle was, Qin Jun saw a lot of civilians' dead bodies. Qin Jun realized the attackers were wearing red-bottom brocade clothing. Every one of them was at the fifth layer of Qi refining realm. Qin Jun tried to recall the previous bodies. He doesn't remember seeing such people. Asking himself, who the hell are they? Qin Jun asked himself. You offended someone they can't afford, said one of the assaulters, as he prepared to kill the person kneeling. The guy on his knees told them that the fifth prince really has a big hand. Hearing the fifth prince, Qin Jun recalls it was one of the previous body's brothers, and his name was Qin Yu, and the attackers are his subordinates. Told you bro is broken even after the nerf. He holds only a twig branch and covers himself, becoming instantly invisible. Go ahead and kill them all, shouted one of the attackers as they charged towards the innocent mother protecting her daughter and the man severely injured, but his will to fight was there. Headshot. Congratulations on killing a fifth layer refining stage realm cultivator, gained 59 XP points. You dare to erase a whole clan under the emperor's feet. You guys have some titanium balls, as I can say for myself. Blood sword guards act. Don't mind him, shouted the man in front in annoyance. Ding mission triggered. Destroy the Bloodsword Guard completion of the task is 2,000 experience points. For today's matter, I will personally take the lead and reunite you fools with your ancestors. How dare you meddle in other people's business and dare try to kill them before he voted to make another move. Double kill. Triple kill. Over kill. Kill. Tacular. So strong, who is this senior? thought the man rescued by Chin Jun. Hey, what were you saying about minding your own business? What is the name of the excellency before me? said the leader of the Bloodsword. Do you know you have offended the Yan family? And you, son of a bitch, you're afraid you have offended the fifth prince. <laughs> you serious? This man began to think that the fifth prince, being highly favored with the emperor and having control over the court, both civilian know he will be king. Chin Jun pretended to be terrified, in which this fucker got confident and told our protagonist to go away, because angering the fifth prince is not something trash as you afford to offend. Ultra kill. The leader of the Blood Sword Guard couldn't believe Chin Jun dared to kill him, despite knowing he's under the fifth prince. Chin Jun gained 88 EACP 
and a system sound resounded, notifying due to the completion of the annihilation of the Blood Sword Guards, he gained 2,000 XP points. The man thanked Chin Jun, telling him he's the patriarch of the Yan family. Our protagonist introduced himself as Chin Jun, which the old man felt he knew that familiar name. It instantly clicked Chin Jun is the long-demoted third prince. That's right, I'm back, but this time I'm here to stand on business and here for all the smoke. Chin Jun recalled the previous owner of the body had been planned to be escorted quietly by the emperor, but everyone in the capital saw it, and in which it was embarrassing, and had used him as an example to be sentenced to death as a warning that no one can violate the law for personal gain. Chin Jun recalled from the previous owner's memory that the fifth prince, Chin Yu, had targeted the previous owner of his body, probably because he had a marriage contract with the daughter of General Nan Meng, who was called Yuk Xin, one of the most beautiful women in the Qin Yui kingdom. Marrying her would secure the throne for him. Greetings, the third prince bowed, followed by his descendants. Don't be too polite. I haven't cleared my name yet, said Chin Jun, asking how they had offended the third prince. Let me give you a brief on what the Chamber of Commerce does. It gathers goods from merchant families and individuals, and often holds auctions of various sizes of shares, and some have an ultimate industry. What Chamber of Commerce? asked Chin Jun. It's the Yanbei Chamber of Commerce. He realized that it was the number one local Chamber of Commerce, and no one knew the financial resources of the Yanbei Chamber of Commerce. You are joking. Can't you guys buy powerful guards? asked Chin Jun. Um... You see, when those monks heard we had offended the fifth prince, they ran away. Nowadays, everyone in the cultivation world knows that the fifth prince and Ziguang sect are close and have been recognized as the future emperor, and now no one would dare offend him, and the fifth prince sent the weak, sick, and disabled to be killed by the blood sword sect. A system notification caught Chin Jun's attention notifying him to conquer the Yanbei Chamber of Commerce, and completion of the task is 4,000 experience. This system notification made Chin Jun smile, calling the system a roundworm because it had just read his thoughts. Since the Yanbei Chamber of Commerce has no foothold in the Qian Yue Kingdom, why not take refuge in me? Because Qin Yu, the fifth prince, is my mortal enemy, and the enemy of my enemy is my friend, said Chin Jun. The Yan family patriarch declined, knowing that Chin Jun was demoted, and being seen at the capital would anger the emperor, and his Yan family would not be able to withstand any waves. Seeing his reluctance, Chin Jun knew he was afraid to associate with him. He told him he was back to restore his name, and once he does, he will support his family. The Yan family's patriarch was convinced, and Chin Jun told him to enter the capital with him. Meanwhile, at the Qin Yue Kingdom Palace, the fifth prince was interrupted by his subordinate. The fifth prince asked if the Yan family had been eliminated, to which the subordinate told him that most were killed, and they had sent a group to look for Mobei, who had fled with a group of children. Hearing this, the fifth prince knew that Yan Mobei, the patriarch of the Yan family, had no cultivation base, and thanked if someone had secretly helped him. You can leave. I'll ask someone to track the Yan family patriarch. Until then, wait for your orders. One day later. At the Qin Yue Kingdom, Qin Jun had infiltrated the Qin Yue Kingdom wearing a black robe, accompanied by Daji and the Yan family patriarch. I'm back, bitches, and this is the final round to all those who had wronged the previous owner of his body. Qin Jun knew the next step was to find the right time in front of the city to restore his princely status in a dignified manner. And if that doesn't work, guess he will have to turn into Madara Uchiha this era. Yan Mobei told Chin Jun that in nine days, the envoy from the kingdom of Kanglan would visit the capital. A special envoy from the Kanglan, thought Chin Jun as he recalled the Kanglan kingdom and Qin Yue kingdom, who seemed allies on the surface, but had been fighting between each other for five years. Each side exchanged a duel between masters, adopting a heads-up system with two wins out of three rounds, and then after the duel, they discussed the affairs of their state. This duel will be a great opportunity for me. When it's time for the duel, I can let Daji go out and fight, adding glory to the country and presenting the maniac general's head. This will please his cheap father, 
bro called an emperor of the state, cheap bro, serving insults better than five-star hotel services. Yan Mobei asked Qin Jun if they should stay in the nearby inn for a few days, to which Qin Jun agreed. They approached the inn when they heard bystanders complaining about the fifth prince. As they entered the inn, everyone's gaze fell on them, and Qin Jun realized there were hostile gazes towards him. An old man looked at Daji, scrutinizing him. Young girl, such a fine establishment. Why are you walking with a malnourished imbecile beside you? Damn! Me personally, I wouldn't take this level of disrespect. Old geezer. Man, shut your bitch ass up! Let me humbly show you a glimpse of the afterlife and familiarize yourself with it, said Chin Jun as he gently greeted the old-timer with an uppercut, giving him a high-tier spiritual seat to visit the afterlife. The old man fell dramatically, adding some spice by falling face flat with legs up. This made no one dare make a foolish move. Daji was enchanted by Chin Jun's domineering attitude. My lord, the room is ready, you can go in and rest, shouted Yan Mobei. Okay, thanks, replied Chin Jun, as he told Daji to follow. Chin Jun arrived in his room when a system sound resounded, telling him that once a month there was an opportunity to summon gods and demons, and he could summon a random god or demon. Of course, start the summon now, he said. The system began to do the random draw and showed that his union had been drawn, showing its loyalty at 85, while others remained hidden. Chin Jun was excited that his next summon would have a mount. Bro is becoming even more broken by every passing month. Meanwhile, inside Qin Yu's palace, the subordinate returned to the fifth prince, telling him that the Yan family patriarch, Yan Mo Bei, was staying at the Luoya Inn and hadn't left ever since. The fifth prince thought cautiously that the loyalty inn was too deep, that even his father, the emperor, told him not to interfere with their deeds. This gave the fifth prince a headache and thought he would wait for them to come out and then kill them. The fifth prince knew that in nine days, his father told him to lead the team, which had significant importance. Looking at the book that contained the envoy from the Kanglen kingdom, the fifth prince thought that if he performed well, his reputation would be pushed to its peak. If anything went wrong, it would be a huge setback. The next day. At the Luoya Inn, Daji was feeding Chin Jun, who was thinking why his summon hadn't summoned. Looking outside the inn, Chin Jun saw a dark figure approaching, accompanied by a group of people behind. The dark figure took out a fan from his cloth. The mysterious figure was indeed the fifth prince, who had caused such turmoil. Chin Yu thought Chin Jun in surprise, thinking why in the hell was he here. Chin Jun quickly hid behind Daji so as not to get discovered, which startled her, asking him what's wrong. Chin Jun thought if the fifth prince was here for Yan Mo Bei, Chin Jun hushed her, telling her to hide first to observe what he was here for. The fifth prince approached the receptionist, asking him if there was anyone in the inn by the name Yan Mo Bei, to which the receptionist told him that the inn does not disclose any information of any guest and told the fifth prince to kindly leave. The subordinate that accompanied the fifth prince released a domineering aura to threaten the receptionist, and at that instant, the fifth prince and his subordinates were surrounded by the workers of the Luoya sect. Get him up, let him get up, let him get up, let him get up. <laughs> This made the fifth prince act humbly and happy, waving and declining, saying he was just joking. The subordinate began to wonder about the origin of the Luoya Inn, that they didn't even fear the fifth prince. The Luoya Inn workers looked at him, about to show this man the art of getting jumped, inspired by Yuji and Nanami. Back at the inn, two females looked at the scene that was transpiring before them, saying that even in the Luoya Inn, the fifth prince needed to humble himself. The woman said that the fifth prince had a decent cultivation base, that he may even be considered a genius, and it's a pity he was the prince. Otherwise, she would have recruited him to her Nanming sect and trained him well. What do you mean by that? Guan Yunchang is here too. Where is my lord? A voice was heard that got everyone in the Luoya Inn's attention, even shocking Qin Jun to jump on Daji, his mouth agape. Seeing him, Qin Jun knew that this was Guan Yunchang, the second master, and he knew he won big time this time round. 
The system congratulated him for his summon, telling him Guan Yun Chong was at the ninth layer of the Void Transformation Realm, and this man was packed with god-tier skills in his asset. The fifth prince, seeing Guan Yu Chang's boldness, knew that if he got his help, he would surely win the contest against the Kanglin Kingdom. He bowed down. Excuse me, senior, said the fifth prince, Chin Yu. Guan Yun Chang told him to get off his cemented and rigid face out of his way. Emotional damage! Senior, please, insisted the fifth prince. Guan Yun Chang turned his head, looking at him, and told him to go away or beat his father and him and let them run around naked. The fifth prince waved, telling Guan Yun Chang that he should rest and will look for him soon, inwardly thinking that he great chance to win against the Kanglan kingdom was lost for now, and that next time he will prepare well to conquer Guan Yun Chang, and if he does, no one will stop his ascension to the throne. The A girl who accompanied the blonde girl said that Guan Yun Chang isn't restrained. The blonde girl told her that if Guan Yun Chang relaces his aura, the whole Luoya Inn will be razed to the ground, and a handful will instantly suffer great injuries and most will die the instant they get contact with his aura. This scared the woman whom began to think where Guan Yun Chang was heading to. He approached our protagonist Qin Jun, whom was standing there proudly like a young child. Guan Yun Chang kneeled saying, this humble servant pays respect to the Lord. This scene dumb striked everyone in the Luoya Inn. None of them didn't believe what they were seeing before them. Our boy adding the fuel to the drama already spoke, telling Guan Yun Chang that he's finally here, in which Guan Yun Chang apologized for making our protagonist Qin Jun to wait, telling him it was due to some spontaneous imbecile blocked him while he entered and asked of Qin Jun could forgive him. The onlookers began to ask each other, Got could the terrifying young man be a subordinate to our protagonist who is young and fragile? Another added, If Qin Jun could be a prince of an outstanding dynasty, or kingdom. The woman was shocked that despite Qin Jun being at the sixth level of the foundation realm and seemed young, he's such a powerful pillar following him. Qin Jun told Guan Yun Chang that it wasn't Gis' problem and helped him up. Daji realized the strength of Guan Yun Chang and noticed he's at the peak of the void transformation realm. Qin Jun introduced this fucker to Daji and Blackie and oh boy, does this monster have a long ass family name? Guan Yun Chang greeted Daji and Blackie. He introduced Daji saying she's in the same realm as him and the dog, in which should not be underestimated, because it was also at the peak of the void transformation, and told Guan Yun Chang to sit with them and enjoy some food. The head of the Luoya Inn entered and served everyone free food to welcome a strong powerhouse to their inn and a powerful young master. Qin Jun gave him a thumbs up, saying he like his arrogance and to keep it up. Everyone in the inn was served free food. People asked for our protagonist's name, and he told them that he is called Master Jun. The girl accompanied the blonde girl said, Our protagonist was handsome, while the blonde girl thought that she must recruit Qin Jun to her Nanming sect, and if she does, her sect will proper for a thousand years. What had happened in the Luoya Inn spread throughout the capital, that Guan Yun Chang, the domineering man, was a subordinate of a young master called Master Jun. The news of the events at the Luoya Inn reached the fifth prince, prompting him to inquire of one of his subordinates whether they had uncovered the identity of the mysterious Master Jun. The spy simply reported to the fifth prince that Master Jun seemed elusive, akin to a ghost. Even the palace gate guards had no record of him. The subordinate presented an article to the fifth prince, featuring a sketch of Master Jun's face, and oh boy who the fuck qualified this imbecile to be a spy, cause bro's sketch so diabolically bad, and the way this fool presented it before the fifth prince in honor. The prince looked at it and was like, I'm surrounded by idiots. He then told the spy to continue the investigation of Master Jun, so to give him a chance to win over Guan Yun Chang. The spy bowed and complied with the fifth prince's command. <laughs> Nan Yuxin, one of the beauties of Qin Yue Kingdom and a daughter of a general and the one who had a marriage contract with Qin Jun, budged at the Luoya Inn, shouting for Master Jun to come out. Qin Jun was awakened by the shouting of Nan Yuxin. Meanwhile, Nan Yuxin approached the Luoya Inn reception counter annoyed. She ordered Qin Jun to come out. Seems she saw through our boy's masquerade. 
Chin Jun stepped out of his room to see who was shouting his name. Seeing it was Nan Yuxin, she recalled that this woman was dissatisfied with the previous owner's marriage contract, as she used to beat the previous owner. My lord called out Daji, approaching Chin Jun while feeling sleepy, he held Daji's shoulder and hit her with the iconic. <laughs> Lend me a hand, huh? What do you mean? asked Daji. The receptionist asked Nan Yushin to be calm and not embarrass him, which she angrily demanded Chin Jun's room number and she would personally go to find him. There's no need for that, someone spoke, which alerted Nan Yushin to turn and saw our boy pulling up with the Dune looks. She demanded if he was Chin Jun as she approached him, telling Chin Jun to shut up and let her compete in a fight, said Nan Yushin. She tried to sneak attack Chin Jun with a condensed chi tempest palm aiming for his face, but our protagonist, the who in this world, is on god mode, dodged the attack that seemed so slow. Nan Yushin was shocked by Chin Jun's frightening speed, which didn't match his cultivation level. You ugly ass knockoff Lil Uzi Vert, get the fuck off with your cheap ass blue brimstone off my sight, said Chin Jun, looking at the astonished Nan Yushin, who in her life had never received such insults. She expressed her anger to Chin Jun, warning him that he would face consequences for his mocking behavior. With a menacing aura, she clenched her fist, imbuing it with ominous power, and launched a full-force attack at Chin Jun. However, Chin Jun remained unfazed, effortlessly blocking her strike with an expression of indifference. Chin Jun had Nan Yushin in submission, making her mourn in pain or pleasure, and don't know which is which. This woman has some weird fetish. Nan Yushin turned her head looking at Chin Jun, requesting for him to let her go. Your comportment is truly lamentable, evoking a profound sense of pity and disdain, said Chin Jun. Damn! Bro has been serving Nan Yushin with the royal disrespect since they met. Nan Yushin held her hand in pain, looking at Chin Jun. You are quite a tough opponent. That's why you can subdue masters that even the fifth prince can't subdue. Shut the fuck up! Your cultivation base is trash. Calling it trash is a disrespect to all trash out there. God damn. Please don't make a fool of your family because your family has power and this place has rules. Nan Yushin, embarrassed, rushed towards Chin Jun, asking him, how is she fooling around? Please behave yourself. You are a woman. Hearing this made Nan Yushin reflect on her actions and turned away, telling Chin Jun that she'll be back and walked out from the Luoya Inn. The Yan family patriarch, who helped Chin Jun enter the Qin Yue Kingdom's capital, observed Chin Jun's composed demeanor amidst the situation. Contrasting this with the reckless actions of other influential lords, such as the fifth prince, he was impressed by Chin Jun's calmness, understanding that his leadership could lead to advantageous outcomes for his Yan family. Reaching his room, <sighs> Chin Jun was relieved that Nan Yushin had not recognized him. Daji called out Chin Jun to return her. Oh my. Should I come over? Asked Chin Jun deviously. Blushing, Daji told Chin Jun he should stand out. Bro was out of the room as if he spawned there. Blackie pulled up and asked Chin Jun if he's a big fan of Opai. Blackie, my loyal best buddy, you don't understand. You find a fine beauty. All boys like them, big or small. It's like a treasure one must always cherish. And if one doesn't, he isn't a real man. And walked away, leaving Blackie speechless. Two hours later. Nighttime at the Luoya Inn, Chin Jun was waiting for that glorious notification sound. <coughs> Notifying him, he had conjured the Van Bay Chamber of Commerce and he gained 4,000 XP and a random draw chance. Seeing the system notification, Chin Jun realized that Yan Mo Bei, the patriarch of the Yan family, had decided to follow him and be under his protection. System, start lucky draw, said Chin Jun. Starting lucky draw, answered the system. Bro summoned the silver dragon spear from the story of the journey to the west. This shit is so broken that it annihilates demons faster than skipping YouTube ads. Like the name, it's pretty domineering, and it's quite inferior, even though it's a heavenly weapon that weighs 5,000 kilograms. This fucker really looked down upon a heavenly grade weapon. This brother needs some astronomical whips. He requested the system to take out the silver dragon spear and those two-brained cells of a protagonist Agonist, reached out his hand, ready to catch a 5,000 kilogram spear. When he held the spear in his hand, this single brain cell protagonist 
like plankton, is on standby when the weight dragged him to the floor, breaking the ceiling, landing into a water bath. This giga chad, instead of looking around to see where he is, bro became comfortable when our boy Chin Jun felt something extremely soft and squishy on his hands, turning to look at the direction his hand had blissfully landed. Seeing it's the Nanming holy sect master, whom he had humbly made an acquaintance to her room through the roof. What a gentleman our boy Chin Jun is. You guys agree with me? She told our boy, it's enough, and he should leave. Chin Jun, you are a despicable young man. You call yourself a master, said the Nanming holy sect master. Chin Jun's brain, after recovering from that fall, told the Nanming sect master that it's a misunderstanding, telling Chin Jun to turn as she changed, and our boy agreed to it. She told Chin Jun she's done changing in which Chin Jun apologizes, telling her he didn't mean it, and he will leave her. Damn. This man pulled up into this woman's room from her ceiling, lands at her bathtub, sees her opai, and bro wants to dismiss himself as if they had met for an appointment. <laughs> Sensational. Even the sect master asked him if bro was gonna just leave after seeing her birthday suit. Woman, you wanna see my birthday suit? That's a felony for such actions. This left the Nanming sect master dumbfounded. She tells Chin Jun if he feels he owes her, then he should join her Nanming sect, which had 12 elders at the beginning of the void transformation realm. Our big shocked to hear the Nanming holy sect, while his lineup can clear an entire sect in which Daji, Blackie, and Guan Yun Chang are all at the peak void transformation realm. Seeing Chin Jun's surprised face, telling her that her sect is one of the top forces in the borderland. Telling Chin Jun if he joins her naming sect, it won't be long till they surpass the Qian Yue kingdom in the future. The goal for part 10 is 100 views and 10 likes in 48 hours. Try making more frequent uploads with the same or even improved quality. If the goal is met, aim for 500 views and 50 likes in 48 hours.